Hi everyone on the internet. What's going on? What's going down? I always start my vlogs doing this. I don't know why. I wasn't gonna make this vlog um, because I'm really sick. Yeah, that's fun. Um, but uh, I was gonna make it when I got better or something, but then I got really excited because I got like two packages in the mail today and one of them was a shit ton of ramen from Sari. Sari and David. I keep forgetting to mention David. And this this thing that they sent for Kayla, it's a giraffe, but its body is so tiny. I spent like an hour crying over this. I don't know why. It's, it's a drink topper. You put it on your alcohol. But this is just really funny to me. I'm <laughs> putting it back on my, my drink that is not alcohol. And then I got this hat, <laughs> which <laughs> made me really happy. <laughs> I'm just gonna wear this. I'm like, you know what? I'm feeling good. We're gonna have a party. I'm gonna make a vlog. I'm gonna drink lots of hot cocoa. I did that thing where I wanted to talk on camera. And so I asked the internet for random questions, and then they gave me them, and now I have them all right here. I didn't get a lot, but I got enough. So that's what we're gonna do! Oh boy! So the first one says, what's your sexuality? My sexuality is someone who likes girls. Girly, girly, girls. Hella girl. Very girl. That's what I like. Tell us about your favorite anime or video game or something. Okay, well my favorite anime is Inuyasha. I don't know if my wall scrolls in the shot. My favorite anime is Inuyasha. Acknowledging the fact that it is not even that good of an anime, it means a lot to me. If you were to ask me what I think the best anime is, I would say Death Note. Death Note or Attack on Titan. But I think I have a slight bias because Attack on Titan just came out and I'm still really hyped about it. But with Death Note, I've had like years and years to think. I've had almost like six years to think about Death Note and I still think Death Note is like the best. My favorite video game is The Legend of Zelda, um, The Wind Waker. That's my favorite video game of all time. Like. People will hear me say that that's my favorite, and they'll think that I just mean like my favorite Zelda game or my favorite Nintendo game. No, that is my favorite video game of all time. It's in my GameCube right now and the light is turned on because I don't think I ever turn it off. I'm like constantly playing it all the time. I forgot I'm supposed to be reading URLs. Okay, Sassy Gay Aaron asked the question about what kind of sex I like to have, and God is ghetto fab faux reels with dashes. Um, the one that I'm answering, in the process of answering! Your favorite dessert, and then your preferred mode of traveling. These are so random, I love them. Okay, so my favorite dessert is, uh, Jesus Christ. I don't know where they even have these. I want to say Red Robin, but they have, like, these fucking lava cakes or some shit that are, like, just brownies and, like, chocolate fudge and fucking ice cream, and that's what's coming to mind right now. Basically, anything with a metric shit ton of chocolate is what I like different kinds of chocolate. You have your chocolate ice cream, your chocolate syrup, your chocolate brownie, your chocolate- everything. I just love chocolate. Like, I love it. I love it. I fucking love it. And my preferred mode of traveling is... I don't know, I really like car rides. Not gonna lie. I don't like tr uh, trains that much because it's literally just like a plane, but on the ground, and going at like slightly faster speed than a car. And I've only been on a train once and it was kind of a bad experience. And I don't like planes that much because um, I'm just afraid that they're so closed in. Like, I, I, if I have a panic attack, there's nowhere I can go because I'm in the air. Like, um, but, and I don't like boats because uh, open water scares the shit out of me. I say right after I mentioned that Wind Waker is my favorite game. Anyways, so it, I love busing and I love car rides. And the main thing that I love about both of these is music. I absolutely love cars and being in cars with people who I can trust. Because I'm afraid of cars, but not if it's with someone who I know is a really good driver. Um, but I love being in cars and like having music on and it being really loud and like being with my sister because we'll just like sing at the top of our lungs and that's that's the kind of shit that I like. I like that shit. Clearly Raining says, how many different hairstyles have you had and what kind? What up? You don't need me for shit. 
I'm vlogging! What do you need to tell me while I'm vlogging? Yes! Yes, he can! Don't bother me again! That was my sister. When I was born, I had this kind of pure white thing going on with my hair. And then for most of my early young life, I had this like blonde bob going on. And it was really cute and my mom tried to put little bows in my hair and I fucking hated it. Cause I was a dirty child who got dirty and scraped her knees and played with worms. And it just did not, it did not. And anyways, um, then, as I got older, my hair started getting less yellow and more brown. Like, it just changed color. When I was, uh, 11, my hair was long. It was, like, down to my back, and it was brown. When I was 12, I dyed it black and cut it short. I tried to get it cut like Demix from Kingdom Hearts, but the lady didn't want to give me, like, a fucking mullet, and she just totally screwed it up, and she tried to give me, like, a feminine haircut, and I was like, no, I want to look like a dude, but she didn't listen to me. So I ended up getting hair that just did not look like what I wanted it at all. And, um, when I dyed it black, and I was, like, hella goth, and it was hella cute, and then after that, I cut it and dyed it like Gwen from Total Drama Island, so it was, like, a bob with, like, really shaved in the back, and it was black with teal streaks that you could only really see in the light. And like the more I got it dyed, the chunkier the streaks became, so you could like see it better, but it still didn't end up being anything particularly noticeable. Then after having my hair like that, my freshman year in spring, uh, me and my best friend as a pact, well my ex-best friend, as a pact to show our friendship, we got our hair, we dyed our hair like Axel and Roxas from Kingdom Hearts, and he dyed his blonde, and I dyed mine red and like bright red and the more I think about it the more I realize that like I don't understand why I didn't do that sooner because red is like my color why didn't I ever think to have my hair red I guess I just didn't think it was goth enough but like why did I never I don't know and then it just got shorter and shorter and shorter until it became this this is the shortest I've ever had my hair like I just can't I cannot, at this point, stand having my hair long. It just pisses me off. Jesus Christ. Squiss says, talk about me. No, not really. I want you to talk about Breaking Bad on camera. Do that, then tell me about- TELL THEM ABOUT THE BALLOONS! Okay, so, uh, I- I would honestly talk about Squiss. I- I love them. I love them a lot. They're- they're really just- <sighs> Me and Squiss have some history! Cause, like, I followed them when I was like 15 years old and then I unfollowed them for some reason. I don't even remember why and then I found them again because I was looking up freaking squickles because me and Zane decided that we're Squisgar and Pickles, which I don't understand why we didn't discover that sooner, but we did. And I was like, I need art of these two kissing because that's what you do when your best friend relates to a character and you relate to the other character. You look for pictures of them kissing. And then I found them again and I was like, oh, I remember you! You drew me Harry Potter Metalocalypse crossover art. And then I was really happy and I followed them again and I was like, oh, I'm sorry I followed you a long time ago. I don't know why I did, but I'm back and hello. And then they were like, ha that's cool. And then we have like major feelings jams and I guess we're getting coffee and they're sending me a little Stan Marsh figurine in the mail with a bunch of art. So that's fun cool. I, I love Squiz, but they want me to talk about Breaking Bad about them, so I don't know what to say about Breaking Bad other than I think it should be called Breaking Sad! I was late to the party. I don't, I don't watch the shows that everyone else watches because I'm a special snowflake and I don't like the mainstream. I don't watch like the TV shows that everyone else is usually watching in the world because I just don't care. And back when I still went to school, I remember people talking about Breaking Bad and being like, Oh yeah, have you seen that show about that that dude who's like a chemistry teacher and he makes meth? And I was like, that? Okay. You know, people on Tumblr were like crying about it. Mamma mia, that's a spicy meatball! And I just, I was like, you know, this looks cool. Watch this show about the guy from Malcolm in the Middle. And then I did. 
and I did it in like two days, and I just like, uh, it had me hooked from the first episode, and I just like, I wasn't expecting that. It took me a long time to relate to a character too. Like, I didn't start relating to Jesse until, like, fucking season three or some shit. I can't stand shows where the episodes are an hour long because I don't have the attention span. I have to blog in between those times. I just sat down and watched Breaking Bad. The reason I like Breaking Bad, that I figured this out, is because it reminds me of Death Note. <laughs> And I don't mean that, like, uh, comparing a, like, a really high-stakes drama to a fucking anime psychological thriller, but it just, oh god, Walter reminds me a lot of Light, just as a person, as a character, as an anti-hero, and uh, it just felt so similar, the way that he just kept pulling Batman gambits out of his fucking ass, and that, that was what I loved, and I just love it so much, and... Ah! I love Gail. Gail was my favorite character. Gail and Jane and... Oh, and Mike! I fucking love Mike! Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. And, like, when I got to the part with, like, Tortuga's head on the fucking turtle, I just kind of got up and left the room. And then I, I thought a little bit, and then I just sat back down. I mean, it even ended similar to Death Note, with, like, the fucking... Spoilers. The fucking, like... Walt just like got shot and he was just bleeding out in his lab and that's how it ended with the music going over the credits that's how Death Note ended Cancer said feelings on how some parents say their kids sexuality is a fave phase not a fave <laughs> that's, that's my feeling that's they just they I mean I want to feel bad for them because they don't understand and they think that it's they're, they think that they're being comforting but they're not it's whatever. It's whatever. It's them projecting things that they hope and things that they have felt in their teenage lives onto their children. And they need to understand that if their kid is going through a phase, it'll pass. And that a kid should be supported through any phase they're going through. Because when you say that something's a phase directly to your kid's face, you're pretty much... What's the word? discrediting any feelings that they might have about that thing, whether it be them really liking a certain TV show or them thinking that they might be queer. You are totally, like, dismissing their feelings when you say it's a phase. So, fuck you guys. I know you probably don't have bad intentions, but you sound like a fucking asshole. Instant Anarchy answered, What was your opinion on the South Park episode, Mr. Garrison's shiny new vagina? Okay, so I did not have any problems with that episode. I say this being like the fucking lame ass. I don't even like calling myself a trans ally, but I am. Like, I am so. That stuff means so much to me. And that episode didn't bother me at all. Uh, I'm gonna get flagged for saying that there are some things. I, like, I don't fully understand. How it could bother someone but like I have a friend who's a trans girl and she had issues with that episode and like I didn't press her on it even though I'm sure she wouldn't have had like problems talking with me about it but like I just I don't know it didn't it didn't bother me there are things that I see in media there are things that'll set me off like little things like just someone being slightly sexist like someone will say like boys have penises and I'll be like not all of them but like that episode didn't bother me. I think the only thing that kind of made me was how um like uh Kyle heard that Mr. Garrison had got a sex change and used that as basis to get plastic surgery and like said on the inside I feel like a tall black boy. I don't like being small and Jewish. That was the only thing that bugged me because it kind of seemed like they were like making the feelings of trans people like I don't think appropriated is the word. No, I don't know what I'm saying. That's the problem. See, I can't explain why I would have problems with this, but I, I didn't have problems with it at all. I liked it. And what I really liked was the episodes following it because like, <sighs> Mr. Garrison is so gender fluid and nobody has any problems with it. That's the thing that makes me happy. Like, if they dislike Mr. Garrison, they dislike him because he's a terrible person. <laughs> Not because he's like, because he's gay or because he's gender fluid or whatever. What's this and what's that? Like, 
as soon as he um, got the sex change and became a woman, everyone was just like, Mrs. Garrison. All the fucking eight-year-olds were like, Mrs. Garrison. All the teachers were like, Mrs. Garrison. And I was like, yes. <laughs> and it's not like it's a joke or anything. Like, I mean, he's kind of annoying with the whole I'm a girl now thing, but... It, it didn't it didn't bother me and then of course he like goes back to being a guy and everyone's just like mr. Garrison nobody nobody fucking cares no nobody cares even when like like after when okay when he identifies as a woman and then he goes and he like sleeps with a bunch of girls he comes into his class and he's like I'm gay guys and they're just like again Maybe I should be mad about it, but I'm not, so I'm sorry if you think I should be mad about it. But I'm not, for now, unless someone shoves a good point in my face about why I should be mad about it. As of now, I am okay with that episode. Van Sandlove! I can't read your URL, but your uh, icon is an image of Hanji with a flower crown, and it's really cute! If you could only eat one type of ice cream for the rest of your life, what flavor would you choose? Okay, so this is a very, very loaded question because my favorite type of ice cream is the uh, chocolate Ben and Jerry stuff, like the really chocolatey stuff with like the chocolate cookies and the chocolate fudge and the chocolate ice cream and it's really chocolatey. Um, but the thing is, is that if I had to eat one type of ice cream for the rest of my life, that wouldn't be it. The reason that wouldn't be it is because there's a type of ice cream that has sentimental value to me, and even though it's not even close to my favorite type of ice cream, if I was never able to eat that ice cream again, then my heart would be broken. So to answer your question, um, sea salt ice cream is what I would eat for the rest of my life, because if I have to go one August 13th without that stuff, I can't handle it. Anonymous asked, Wendy girl, my question is, how do you make friends? I mean, I have people who consider me friends, but we don't talk a lot. I've only really had one long lasting made friendship in my life, to be honest. And it all arose after they got sick of bullying me. I don't know how to properly make friends. Can you lend a hand? Okay, well, the first way to figure out how to make friends is to learn how to be alone. Okay, that's the first step. You have to learn how to not have friends in order to prepare yourself to have friends, okay? Once you have figured out how to be alone, you can go in confident making friendships because you aren't scared that they won't like you and you aren't scared that you won't be surrounded by people. And I don't know if that makes sense, but that's, that's what my instinct here is telling me. So then you just kind of Go for it. You find people who like things you do. You see someone wearing a shirt for a band that you like and you say, holy shit, I love that band. Do you listen to them often? And then you go strike up a conversation. You, And I mean, you do this anywhere. You do it at school. You do it in social circles. You get your friends to introduce you to other people. You go to parties. Even if you're totally awkward the whole time, like, just, just gotta take the chances, you know? Because you might go out of it with something crazy and... I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm trying to think about how I made friends and I've never had a problem making friends because I'm loud and I talk to everyone I see. But honestly, the, the way that I'd suggest making friends is just compliments. I mean, that's how you talk to people. You just compliment them. That's how, that is the surefire way to start an amazing conversation. You see someone with cool hair, you say, I like your hair. And then you see if you can go a conversation beyond that, you know? Anyone's going to be happy if you compliment them. Anyone's going to want to stay around if you compliment them. And, I don't know, the way that I make friends nowadays, because I don't go to school, I don't have a job, I just sit in my house all day, is that I meet people on the internet, and they get me into fandoms, and then I just happen to live in an area where a lot of fandom gatherings happen, so I just meet friends by going to these gatherings, and I'm kind of lucky in that aspect. Not a lot of people have that, not a lot of people have Washington stuff like I do. Um, but honestly, I, I, I don't know if I can give you a good answer. Just talk to people. Like, talk to everyone you possibly can because you are bound to walk out of that with friendships. And I don't know, that's my answer. Smile at people, talk to people, compliment people. If you see an opportunity, take it. And just understand that you don't need a lot of friends to achieve true happiness. You can have one good friend and that can be all you need out of life. I'm in a hoodie now because uh, 
I ended the vlog and I was like, oh, vlog's over. And then I refreshed my inbox and there were like three more questions and they were all really good and I didn't want to delete them. So I'm, I, I'm doing it, I'm doing it, I'm doing it. Dictatorial Fred, who already asked a question, but it was like, why does? Um, asked me, uh, talk about popular ships in the fandoms you're in that you don't like. Okay, so, um, usually I'm the one shipping the popular ships, so this is really hard. The one that comes to mind immediately is Latula Pyrope and Matuna Captor from Homestuck. I cannot stand that ship. It makes me physically sick to the point of where if people do not tag it or any instances of Pyropes and Cactor- C Cactors? Cactors! Pyropes and Captors interacting, I will unfollow them straight up. It legitimately triggers and upsets me. <laughs> Talking about it is okay because I prepped myself for it, but ooh, I can't, I can't with that ship. There's nothing in the South Park fandom that's popular that I don't ship. The most popular ship in the South Park fandom is Style, at least I think it is, and I ship Style. Not nearly as hard as everyone else ships Style, but I ship Style. Um, Metalocalypse, I'd say Squistoke, which I ship. Oh, oh, I got one! Oh, I got one! Okay, I hate hate okay no i don't actually hate it i just don't get it um irari which if you don't know is the shipping of levi and aaron from attack on titan i do not understand that ship at all like i don't know i don't get the basis of it i don't understand and i don't hate it as much as it frustrates me because i don't get it like i really do not know i do not understand Anonymous asked, are you always this cute? Austin Loves Allie asked you, what's your favorite childhood memory? Oh, Jesus. Um... I... I don't know. My childhood was really good. What comes to mind is waking up on my fifth birthday and um, my best friend Kyle making dinosaur noises outside my window because he didn't know how to knock. If you read the friend zone post, <laughs> you know that. Kyle didn't know how to knock, so. My best friend Kyle, I say as I'm wearing this hat. Okay, no, <laughs> this is a good idea, like since we were in diapers. Oh, um, we're not friends anymore because I moved and we had a fight. <laughs> he fucking was outside my door making dinosaur noises with a stick. He had this stick that was like his best friend. He picked the stick up every morning and he didn't know how to knock on doors. So he went outside my window and he went, Aah! and then I just woke up and came outside and was like, Kyle! And then he was like, ah! And then we were, we hang out. We built caterpillar houses. Um. But my fondest memory is waking up on my fifth birthday, hearing him making the dinosaur noises outside my house, running outside, and the ice cream truck being right there, just like perfect distance for it to take long enough for me to go get my parents, ask them for birthday money, and then go get ice cream for me and Kyle. So me and Kyle got our ice cream, and we sat on the hill because I live next to a trailer park, and then we just partied, and we jumped on my trampoline. And yeah, that's what's coming to mind, I don't know. Yeah, that's it. That's it. That's the end. That's that's the real end. Um I love you all. Never feel afraid to ask me to do a vlog on a certain topic because I will. If you tell me to ramble for 10 minutes about one topic, if you want it to be super sentimental or super personal or super embarrassing, I will do it cuz I love you and I love talking. So Yeah. <laughs>